So, hello everyone. Welcome to this segment of Ask the Dog Man. We are live today on both Facebook and YouTube. This is the second episode that we've been able to do both um, um, social media channels, at least we hope anyway. So, this is Angel Soriano with our, Jane, with our producer James Stone. Uh, he's in the background over here. You'll probably hear him later or not. We're ready to rock and roll, I hope. Actually, you don't want us rocking and rolling. Nothing about dancing. But if you've seen James or I dancing, you probably would not want that. So, if you're new to the show, this is the show where we offer solutions to your canine and behavior type issues, uh, training questions, any of that. Just type it into the into the comments section here, and uh, and we'll be able to deal with it. So um, again, to engage us, all you need to do is go to the comments section of either one of those channels and pop your question. In the future, by the way, we're actually going to have a phone line. We're working on that, but that requires a lot more manpower and uh, logistics and equipment that we just have not really invested in. So um, for now, just pop it in. It'll it'll come up, and James will spot it. He'll read it for you, and we'll move forward. So it's really that simple. It's not that bad. So for now, uh, whoever's out there, just give us a heart, a thumbs up, a comment, just something. Just make sure that James doesn't get all bent out of shape because he starts worrying that sound is not working or video is not working, whatever that is. He, he gets a little bit stressed. If you've not met James, he gets stressed about this stuff, okay? And it's great that one of us gets stressed about it because I couldn't care. So we, in the past, in the last couple of segments, we started this discussion, James, of the dog days of summer. And yep. both episodes have been interrupted rudely by questions and behaviors. I'm items. We should just scrap that. Whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't think people want to hear about the dog days of summer? Okay. Well, um, I was hoping to get back to it again, but I guess not, huh? So, um, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, their questions, their questions are a lot more important. But I thought it was kind of funny that both weeks in a row, people just kept asking questions about other behaviors and stuff. So we moved on. So, anyway. Um, so while questions come in, I do want to talk about something though. We, uh, Lynn and I went to uh, Lake Ten Killer this past weekend for four days, and we took the grand girls. We had a blast. We did not take the dogs, by the way, because this was a grand girl vacation. Okay, so we took them and we had a good time. We took the motor home and the whole bit. Anyway, the point is, is that we had a good time. But guess what? I came up with this, you know, inspiration, James, about safety for our dogs i'm always thinking dog stuff okay and that's because i saw dogs doing the right things and dogs doing the wrong things at the lake in, on a boat off the boat in the campgrounds and i figured you know this would be good filler information to talk about and if we don't get to it because people don't want me to talk about it and they start popping questions then what i'll do is do maybe a daily dog man on it because i i think a lot of these points are pretty important so, yeah. what do you think? Should we talk about that? Well, I've got some questions if you want to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, they don't want to hear about they, they don't want to hear about the vacation, do they? <laughs> Fine. Let's go with the first question. So, Carly asks, uh, she's got a lazy puppy that suddenly turned into a crazy energetic destructive <laughs> chewer. Hmm. So, it sounds like Carly's wanting some help with uh, with puppy chewing. Okay. Okay, so the question here, Carly, and you're welcome to pop in as we're talking about this, is how old is this puppy? So sometimes people talk about eight weeks being a puppy, which it is, and sometimes we're talking about eight months being a puppy. Uh, yes, they're both puppies, but one is kind of a young adult, right? So different fixes. But just know that puppies go through this stage, right? They, they go through teething stages that are two in a row, and they don't get over the first one before the second one starts. And during that teething stage is when they do a lot of their chewing. The problem is that unless it gets interrupted and corrected and rewarded properly, they'll continue that chewing, that chewing stage for two, three, five years, sometimes forever. Okay, so it needs to be interrupted sometime in their, in their lifetime. So if you're really dealing with a young pup that is going through the teething stages, which happen, by the way, from anywhere between five weeks of age till about 12 is when they go through their first week, uh, first set of teeth. And then after that, about, you know, 20 to 25 weeks or so, they'll go through the second set of teeth, which lasts another five weeks or so. So if we're talking about any of that teething stage, then it's really about doing a replacement type um, item. And, and that is that 
you know, whenever you see them, you know, wanting to chew on something, give them a chew toy, typically a heart toy. Uh, give them something that's been frozen. You may want to freeze one of your toys. And, and you know, by the way, they have uh, doggy teething rings. I guess the same thing they use for kids, but don't give them the kid one because they'll destroy it. Um, and you freeze them, you give it to them, it feels good, and they have something to chew on. So, and, and what you need to do during this chew stage is continue to do that, continue to do it, continue to do it, and eventually they're looking forward to that instead of your precious wood, okay? Now, let me answer the question as it relates to an eight-month-old, a 10-month-old, you know, a dog that's no longer teething but still has that residual issue that they once had then guess what? Now we're dealing with an interruption, right? The interruption is, hey, this is not good. This is not a good desired behavior that this dog should be doing. So, you know, get products like bitter apple, bitter orange, uh, spray your fine furniture with it and or your fine items and do it daily. And the idea here is that you're giving your dog a bad experience. They're going to go try to chew it. They're going to get this bad taste. Most dogs don't like that. They're going to stop it. They're going to knock it off. And when they do, you must replace that with a couple of things. One is throw a toy at them that they like and then reward the new behavior of them chewing the toy and not your fine furniture, right? So it depends on the age group what the fix might be. And uh, oh, seven months I just got from, uh, from James. So seven months, you're dealing with a behavior that got established as a puppy. Interrupt, like I said, bitter apple, bitter orange. Uh, sometimes, by the way, if you have a, you know, in the old days we used to carry a bunch of keys. If you still have a bunch of keys, you know, you can throw keys anywhere near the dog, not at the dog, just near the dog to interrupt the sequence, right? They start chewing on something, you make a noise, you clap, you slam a door, you do something that alerts the dog that you're doing something different. And when that happens, you wait three, four seconds or so, make sure the dog, is, the dog is focusing on you, reward this new behavior of them focusing on you and not chewing the stuff. Again, uh, products like Bitter Apple and Bitter Orange work real well, and I, I'm not going to, uh, I, I don't want to plug any one company in this particular segment, but I can tell you go to the original people. Don't go to the second markets. Don't go to the big store name brands, okay? They're, they don't work, okay? That's, that's all I have to say. Anyway, great question. Uh, do we have another one? Yeah, Kelly has a similar question. Um, mm -hmm. She also has a six-month-old puppy, um, but gets overly excited when they come home. So how excitement. Does, how okay. The, the, the excitement. Okay. So overexcitement, interesting enough, comes from you probably being overexcited. I'm sure you wanted to hear that. Um, so a couple of ways of doing this. It's going to take some time, especially on a young dog like that. Uh, you say seven months? Six months. Six months. Okay. Uh, it's it's going to take a little bit of time because this dog has already been accustomed to your lifestyle. And most likely you come home and you're so excited to see your dog and you get them out of the crate or maybe they're loose and you just make a big deal out of it. So my suggestion is the following, and that is uh, next time you depart your house, let's say that your dog is allowed to be free. I don't know if that's the case. I wouldn't allow it on a six-month-old, but, you know, I, I would discourage that. But let's say he's loose in the house or he's in a crate. Make no big deal out of it. Put him in there. Don't say goodbye. Just leave. When you come back, the same thing, right? You open your crate, or if he's not in a crate and he's loose around the house, ignore him for the first two to three minutes. Do your thing. Put your stuff down. Um, if he tries to jump, turn around, face the other way. The idea is ignore the bad behavior. Eventually, he's going to sit next to you and say, what in the world is going on? What have I done to you, right? When he does that, then give him the attention, but let it be toned down. Your volume control has to be real low on your hellos and real low on your goodbyes, right? The more you do this, the better the dog is going to get at it. And guess, guess what? Eventually, what's going to happen is you're going to open up the door and this dog's going to sit to say hello to you because he or she knows that you don't like that. And more importantly, you don't say hello until they do, right? So Try that for a while. Give us some feedback. It's It should work. The puppies are really easy to train. and They, they follow your lead every single time. It's kind of cool. So She says it's from her. Um, she misses her so much during the day, and she's in the crate. So, ah, uh -huh. so yep. That's... So, you know, same thing. If you're, if you're letting them out of the crate, by the way, if you're letting them out of the crate and you've been gone for any more than three or four hours, you probably need to, like, go straight to the door, right? Don't say hello inside. <laughs> Just go straight to the door. And now go out with them. But again, ignore them, right? If you don't go out with them, they're going to turn around. They're going to want back in. And guess what? They didn't take care of their business. So go out with them so they take care of their business, but ignore. I know you, you miss your dog and your dog miss you. Ignore the dog for two to three minutes. They're going to calm down. Then you can love on them. And again, when you love, 
volume control down. Do not love at high intensity, love at low intensity. It'll, it'll work. It's, that's a great question, though. Mm -hmm. So Ellie um, also has a five-month-old puppy. So am I going to get to talk about my vacation? No, nope, you're going to talk about puppies all day. <laughs> um, Ellie has a five-month-old puppy who likes okay. to jump on people, counters, the kitchen table, etc. Um, they rescued this puppy last week, um, and they have no manners. So it sounds like they need... <laughs> they sure do. They sure do. Okay, so uh, James hit it right on right on the mark. There's so many things that need to happen with a puppy, but more importantly, they need a foundation, right? Five months of age, they're ready for something called basic obedience instead of a puppy class. And uh, by the way, puppy class is nothing more than teaching your dog how to learn, right? They learn how to learn. It, it, it you know, yeah, they learn a handful of things, but it's really about getting the little brain stimulated around the fact that they need to learn these fun things that are called lessons that are called learning. It's kind of com confusing in terms, but now back to a uh, five month old, it, your dog needs a foundation, a basic obedience foundation. They need to understand that when you say something, it needs to happen, right? You tell them to sit, you tell them to down, you tell them to stay, you tell them to come. All of those, right, they need to be executed and the dog needs to do it. They, they're kind of slow at the beginning and then eventually they get to be, you know, little little military, little, you know, little soldiers, right? But um, how do you get the dog to not jump on you? That's another command. But the command of not jumping on you is not going to happen very well if they don't have an understanding of just normal obedience. They don't have an understanding of, of or a foundation of what it is you expect out of them. But again, do that kind of stuff at work. Now, let me assume that you've done a little bit of obedience and this dog still jumps on you. I'm going to give you a couple of tips that work really, really well. Uh, if you've got a jumper on you, not a counter, but if you have a jumper on you, then, you know, one of the best things that works is grab a hold of those front paws and hold them. And you got to hold them, you know, kind of tight and don't let go. Don't let go until this dog starts dancing with you. They'll want to one off just convince yourself this dog wanted to jump so hold on to their paws see they started the game right and wait until they pull and pull and dance and dance and eventually you're going to let go you're going to say command off right providing your dog has got a foundation and understands that you have language and you say sounds to get them to do things they're going to start understanding that off means my paws are going to be on the ground because if i don't do it she's going to grab a hold of them or he's going to grab a hold of them and hold me nice and high uh, by the way never off the ground right just nice and tight so uh do that every time the dog jumps on you and eventually they get the idea again providing they have a foundation and they understand that when we make sounds, they are to do things. By the way, dogs learn primarily through hand signals and visualization. They, they visualize things other dogs are doing and they start getting it. They do accustom themselves to sound, right? Because we make sounds, that's how we communicate. And we say sit and they don't have a clue what that means. But when we show them, then they realize that that sound means they need to place their butt on the ground. So the same thing with off, it's just a sound to them. Then a good foundation will start getting them to understand that when you make sounds, you, you're expecting something out of them. So try that. That is, it's, it's, it's easy to do. It, it's just a, a matter of time. If your dog does not have an obedience foundation, um, uh, shameless plug, give us a call and we'll get you enrolled. We'll get you, you know, moving in the right direction. This is easy to do and it's fun. Right? That's the, the, the more important part of it. It's a lot of fun to do. So good. Can I talk about vacation now? They feel bad for you. So you can <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Really? I can't? Wow, this is good. So now I don't even know what to say. Oh, we were talking about um, 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 the, you know, a bunch of dogs while, dogs while I was on wild, vacation. Wild yep. Dogs yep, yep. Well, you know, I wouldn't say wild. I don't want people to be offended. There was a bunch of friends that came with us, so their dogs were not wild. Their dogs were perfect, by the way. But they were all, both of them very, very old. Um, so I guess my first point until we get the next question is that not all dogs are natural swimmers. And... A lot of people get this idea that, you know, hey, a dog can swim. Well, most can't, right? Uh, a good number of them you're actually able to teach them. And some are natural swimmers, but some. So the idea that, hey, you know, he'll figure it out, it's not a good one. So just assume your dog doesn't know how to swim. And then assume the following, and that is that even good swimmers will eventually exhaust, right? So 
understand that because I saw some things that I didn't feel comfortable with, right? And it was, you know, dogs out on, you know, outside of the boat playing around and this and that, and they had no way of getting back in there. So you have to teach them how to get back into a boat, even for a human. Trust me, I was in the water. Even for a grown-up, for a human, it's hard to get back into a boat and you imagine a dog. So they do have uh, floating boards and sometimes even foam boards that you can put on a boat and the dog can actually climb and make it much easier for them teach them how to use that kind of stuff that way they can get out but even more important than that um are life jackets right james um, yeah, it, life jackets. Uh, you know every dog if you're going to have them around water put a life jacket on them and then make sure that they're fitted correctly i noticed a number of dogs that had life jackets that were too big this is like putting a you know a human or a grown-up life jacket on a child you know it, it, you, you got this body just wobbling inside of it. It doesn't serve the cost. So, you know, make sure that you do that kind of stuff and you, and you fit it and make sure that it's nice and tight, especially around the chest area. It should not move around. The dog should still be able to breathe. Do this, put it together, and test it out, right, yeah. before you go anywhere. A good idea would, is always to get the dog acclimated to it so it's not new uh, to the dog when you first you know, get out into the middle of the lake. So. Let yep. the dog wear it around a little bit. Let it play on the shore so it can, you know, actually touch the ground while it has it on there. Get in the water a little bit. Yep. Um, but you know, if, if, if the first time it wears the the life jacket is out in the middle of the, <laughs> the, the lake. It's hmm. going to be terrified. Yeah, it, it's going to be a bad experience. So, and James makes a good point. He says, "Get in the water." Yeah, don't be afraid to get in the water, right, with them. Um, especially if you've already tested it and everything's fine. Then, as you're doing this, maybe in a beach area, at your little favorite lake or whatever, just get in the water with them and see how they react. Make it fun. By the way, your look and your actions are going to be mimicked by your dog. If you're having fun and you show them and, and you're smiling and 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 they feel it in you, they're also going to feel like this is a good thing to do almost like children by the way um i would also suggest strongly that you too wear a life jacket okay because if your dog becomes stressed or scared they will drown you they're they're amazing uh animals and with four legs and in a stress situation you're going to be underwater and if you're not a very good swimmer you're going to pay the price so yeah you know, no, no reason to do that so anyway so that's kind of the water stuff what do you think james yeah no, that's all good, good information. Good, good, good. Uh, should we talk about campground safety? Because I, yeah. I have more, right? Yeah. I, I saw some things that I wanted to cover. So, all right, I, I do all this because, you know, I, I, I get this inspiration because we go on trips and then and I go, wow, look what they shouldn't be doing. And then I feel kind of awkward in public saying to people, hey, don't do this because, you know, they're, they're probably going to have some chosen words for me. So if you have a small dog and you're on a campground, my rule number one is do not leave them alone okay if you have a bigger dog that's a fine thing you know it's okay still i would not have them off leash if other people don't want to be managing your dog uh same with your children they probably don't want to be managing your children but i won't talk about that they don't want to manage your dogs but the, the problem with small dogs being too far away from you is that uh most campgrounds guess what there are you know most likely critters in the woods and critters flying that could very easily your dog or your cat or whatever it is you're camping with and and have a fine meal off of it okay so i you know as crude as that sounds i suggest don't be too far away from it because you're going to be a lot bigger and scares off most other little tiny critters that may see your dog kind of appetizing so uh don't make your dogs <laughs> someone's quick meal okay I, I hate saying it that way but that that that's what happens I, i've seen birds do this kind of stuff okay they're large prey birds will actually you know, do damage. So be near your small animal, all right, at all times. Um, the other is, and I think I touched on it a little bit, and that is don't let them go mix it up in other people's campgrounds. It's not going to go well. Um, there's so much trouble they can get in, including another animal, another dog, possibly. So, and, and again, it's probably not very neighborly to do. You wouldn't let your dog go next door to your house and harass your neighbors. Why are you harassing you know the campsite next to you so i saw that also on a couple of campsites so i figured okay that's another no-no I, I was taking a lot of notes instead of vacationing james you know that happens yeah i was working so um the other you know in campgrounds depending on the, how sophisticated they are some camp campgrounds have power outlets right and we we had the motorhome so we we were one that had power outlets and there's quartz laying around and you know, it's not safe for unsupervised dogs to be around that kind of stuff, especially since we had a couple of people talk about chores, right? right yeah. So 
think about that. You have a bunch of chewers and they're in a campground. They're going to light themselves up and that's not going to end up well. No. And then on top of the electric, uh, electrical stuff, I mean, there's sticks and trash and all kinds of things laying around. So supervision is always best, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. whether you're camping or at home. Uh, supervising your dog is always best when you can. Well, and guess you're talking about trash. You know, you don't know other people's trash, meaning you, you know what you're throwing out, you know, and maybe a plastic and maybe this and maybe that. And you don't know what other people are throwing out. And, you know, it, it's not, it's just not a safe thing to do for your dog to smell something they want to get into and get into someone else's trash and who knows what they're going to get into, right? So uh, many, many years ago, and on a negative note, many years ago, I lost a phenomenal uh, golden retriever to the fact that he got into somebody's trash somewhere. Uh, who knows where and ate a corn cob and the corn cob got stuck in him and be, by the time I figured out what was going on it was too late and anyway he, I lost him so anyway you don't know what's in someone else's trash so be 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 on top of it anyway so got, what do you think got one question here yeah on how do you stop licking hmm is this a uh, young puppy or, or uh, here, I'll pop the question. It's, 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 a, it's an older dog. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a licker, again, think about this. This is a dog that developed licking over time, over the years, or over the months, however old, you know, this animal might be. If it's something different, if it's a puppy or so, pop it in the, in the comment section and we'll, we'll, you know, James will bring me up to speed. But if we're dealing with a grown-up dog that has been licking, just know that it's established behavior, and as a result of it, it's going to take some time to break away from it or get in, get this dog to stop. Um, is it hands? Is it face? Is it feet? What is it, right? Now, whatever that licking might be, uh, or by the way, sometimes I've, I've seen dogs that are so uh, ex, uh, compulsive that they're actually licking walls and that kind of stuff. That's a different, a different issue altogether. It's a comp compulsive behavior that... It's different. Whenever they're licking you, um, just understand that they're going after the salt and they've gotten used to it and they like it. And guess what? You didn't oppose to it. Now, years later, you're opposing because, oh my gosh, you're always wet and you're tired of this. You kind of created a monster. Or somebody, if you adopted this dog, somebody created a monster for you. So, uh, I mentioned earlier, bitter apple. Guess what? It works. The only problem is that if you put it on yourself, be careful where your hands all you know end up because if they accidentally end up in your lips, that's going to be some bad tasting stuff. It will not kill you. It's not going to hurt you. It doesn't hurt the animal. It's it's just going to be a bad day, okay? Because it's hard to get that stuff out of your out of your breath. It just stays with you. But nonetheless, if he's a hand licker, set him up. Right? That's what I tell people. Just spray it over your hands and say, here, come lick. You know, and just leave your hand available. Make it available. The dog's going to lick. He's going to go, yuck, what is that? When they pull away and they're disgusted by it, wait three to four seconds. Reward the new behavior, right? The new behavior is he walked away and he's not licking. Reward that behavior verbally. If he's close enough, you can touch him. If he goes back to licking, make sure it's an area that has been sprayed. If it's your feet, the same thing. There's a lot of uh, uh, dogs that will lick feet for whatever reason. Same thing. Spray your feet, okay? Um, but do that repeatedly. Um, James is like compulsively, you know, having issues here with the feet licking <laughs> statement. <laughs> He's visualizing this thing and it's not looking pretty for him. Dogs will do this, James. You'd be surprised to think dogs lick. So, uh, but hands, feet, those are kind of common items. Uh, now, if you're talking about a dog that is licking walls and things like that, it's a, that's a compulsive behavior. And I'd be willing to bet that this dog probably chases bright lights or shadows, there's probably something compulsively going on, and I would say you need some professional help, you need a behaviorist, give us a call, and let's work through it, because that's not an easy fix, okay? That Those those things take time, sometimes they take years, but there's something compulsively going on with this animal, and how it got started is important to understand. Sometimes we don't have that piece of the formula, and if so, then we gotta try different things until we finally get to something that actually works. I, I'll assume this is a people licking and not item you know, licking. By the way, the same thing with walls. Uh, I've seen dogs all compulsively lick carpets and, you know, and, but again, it's something that is common with them is that they'll chase bright lights. They'll chase shadows, anything that moves around. They're, they're, they're compulsive about that. Sometimes if there's a fly, they go compulsive over it as well. So it's compulsive behavior that needs to be dealt with, but it's going to take time. Just call a professional. Don't, don't, you know, for the most part, a lot of those are fixable. They take time. So anyway,
Uh, James, at the same time, holy macro, we really were there, huh? Okay, so gosh, uh, I wasn't even done with my campsite stuff. We'll have to pick it up next oh, time. <laughs> we'll harass him with my vacation next time we do this. So, well, uh, there you have it, folks. Thank you for tuning into our Ask the Dog Man live show today, uh, where we talk about campsites, I guess. That's the only thing we, we well, I, I attempted to talk about it, and they wouldn't let me. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here with us today. Uh, and by the way, we're sorry if we didn't get to all your questions. I know that you, some of you may have popped comments. We'll get to those after the show and make sure that at least we give you a written response. If, uh, if not, we'll pick up the subject next week and we'll talk. We'll be back in two weeks on August the 14th at 1230, same time, same bad channel, uh, same social networks. And uh, remember, if you like this, share it, tell your friend, you know, like us, watch us again, do what's right. This is all we ask. We're not asking for money. We're asking for a share, a button, a like, a heart, whatever it is. So Last, my friends, do not struggle with your dog training or behavioral issues. This is what we do, and we'd love to help you, so just call. This is Angel Soriano, a.k.a. Dog Man, barking back at you. You asked, we answered.